I would think that society expects, especially the black community, would expect um, men to be, you know, the caretakers, to be the providers, uh, to be the leaders, to be the head of the homes, where I view men a bit differently. I don't really expect men to be the ones leading. I don't really expect men to provide for me. I don't necessarily think that men are fit enough to be the head of anything, actually. My father, again, works for SAPS. So during even during RU reference list, when people were getting um, arrested, my father would call to find out if I'm okay. And I remember this one time I asked him, I was like, why, why do you guys come across as so detached and it's easy for you to you're a man you're you're not just a man you're someone's father but it's easy for you to just grab a female and drag her because yeah you're gonna learn today so he says to me no it's it's the way the academy um trains the police because when they go to college they are very desensitized and they are trained to this is how you do things and for them they, it, it's instilled in them that you're meant to um, you're meant to make sure that there's order and if you make the wrong one step out of line then to them it's cha- it's chaotic and they need to instill order so I wasn't I wasn't surprised at the fact that a police man was manhandling my friend that also didn't surprise me because I think it's also because prior to our arrest we had been seeing so much violence happening at other campuses that I was a bit I was expecting it. First male figure that I was introduced to like growing up obviously was my father. Um, I have many good memories with my father but also some bad memories with my father. That problem that he had with alcohol or still has with alcohol that he's fighting has led to some major things happening within the house. Um, within a house, obviously, and um, for example, um, the one thing that I can remember growing up was that, even to this day, though it still happens, was my father, whenever he's drunk, because it happened during the week sometimes, or during the weekend, whenever he's drunk, there will be something going on at home. There will be some form of argument or some form of, you know, violence even. And um, I remember um, growing up, and I think it was around five years old, and I just remember running from home because my father was now beating and kicking my mother um, and um, going to seek help from relatives at five years old and it was dark outside. And I think just that one memory um, is one of the things I look back at and think, but I'm not so proud to have you as a father, although we have all these good other things going for us. During the time when we were friends, my mother used to hint that um, He's a nice person, and I was, you know, consider being in a relationship with him. And some of my friends actually did that. And, like, I liked him, so that's how I got into a relationship with him. Like, that's how I agreed when he asked me out. And um, when we were officially in a relationship, it was, you know, this ideal relationship because he was a very nice person to other people. And I, I also thought that he, he had a lot of insecurities and he was a violent person and he could do anything. Um, he, he, was, he was homophobic, misogyny, and every, everything that you could think of. Like, it was very baffling, actually, um, being exposed to that. And it was very difficult for, for, for me to actually try to confront him about these issues because he would just get violent. And I would be the one who would end up apologizing. And um, even if uh, there's something when we don't when we don't agree about something, he would um, he would try and guilt trip me. Even if he is the one who is in the wrong, like I was the one who was always apologizing, who was always um, um, trying to to make things right because of I will. What will people think? 
um that's when he actually tried to rape me and like it was like i couldn't believe it myself and after that he apologized and and he said that he couldn't control himself and he said that well besides that i mean it's his main nature because um I was wearing a short skirt. I don't wear short skirts. Like I don't wear any any mini dresses, uh, hot pants, or anything. I don't wear short stuff. It was just above the knee. But he said that like um, my legs were so seductive. That is why he actually lost control and tried to like rape me and all that stuff. When I was in Cape Town, all of my friends knew that I was gay. Um, I never hid it from anyone, and it's something that I've also always known since I was very young. I've never experienced anything like that before um, at the arts festival. I've had one or two moments before in Grahamstown over my four years here of studying that they've, they have been a slur or two thrown at me um, as I walk past or something like that, but nothing like what happened at Fest this year. I had some friends coming up from Cape Town who came to festival for the first time and since it was a Friday and Graham, Grahamstown Friday night is the best night to go out, we had all decided that we were going to go out. And from that point things started to get physical. Um, they started to shove us from behind and we, I just kept saying, please look, we're not looking for any trouble, it's over, Let's, we just want to go home. We're not looking for any problems. I was wearing quite a relaxed collared shirt and he strangled me with it. Um, from grabbing on the collar and pulling it tight around my neck. Kicked me to the floor, kicked me a few times, um, just kept screaming at me. Traditional <laughs> things, you fucking morphy um, fag. And he, kept, he just kept saying, you, what, you keep staring at me, what do you want me? And I'm like, no, my love, I, I just, all I wanted him to do, all I kept saying was, please just leave us be, let us go, we're not looking for any problems, all we want to do is go home. And he just kept saying to me, well, I want you to apologize. So I just started to apologize. I didn't know what I was apologizing for, but I just, I was like, I'm sorry, I'm so, so sorry, please, we, I didn't mean anything, please just let us go. And this guy wasn't interested. I was grateful that it happened to someone like me, who can brush it off and say, it's not fair and it's not acceptable, but I'm okay enough in myself to, to move on and to not, to not let these people decide my life for me.